What's up guys, JTales here for another video, and today I'm bringing to you a character guide on the Belmonts. Let's get right into it. I think the first question you're probably going to be ha having is, what's the difference between Simon and Richter? The only difference between the two is that Richter's holy water is not considered fire. Simon's holy water is considered fire. What does that mean? That means that if you're fighting Olimar with these guys, uh, Richter's holy water will kill red Pikmin, and Simon Simon's holy water will kill blue Pikmin. Blue Pikmin will not die to Richter's holy water, because this is blue, and Simon's holy water will not kill red Pikmin. That's it. It's the only difference in this game. So, that's, uh, I just wanted to clarify that. Nothing else is different, aside from... Richter is probably more handsome and Simon is more badass. That's it. So anyway, let's get into it. Um, okay, so we have uh, Richter here and these guys are keep away characters. So um, I am going to talk a little bit about their projectiles. Um, cross, you can actually do it. Oops. I'm trying to do a gentle cross, right? So if you just hold forward and press B, you get a gentle cross. And then if you hit B and forward at the same time, you get a hard cross. Cross actually lasts quite a long time. Notice where I'm standing, right? So I'm actually going to move away from it. See how it, how it goes past the point of where I threw it? It actually travels quite a distance past the point where you initially throw it from, right? So I'm standing here, hard cross. So it covers a lot of space, it controls a lot of space, which is um, the point of this game, controlling space until you can put your opponents in bad positions. So cross is really good, cross is going to be probably your most widely used move, um, for the most part. Axe. Axe kills opponents, um, it's a kill move, it deals 18%. You can angle the axe, if you press B and then hold back, you can do a shallow axe, and if you press B and hold forward, you can do a far axe, right? But you don't want to get crossed by mistake. And then neutral B is just like right in the middle, right? You can kind of see the difference between these these different axes, different trajectories, right? So um, getting used to like your axe distances to cover the ledge is really important, or like to do a shallow axe when... Um, also important to note is that Axe actually hits, it goes through the stage. So take a look at um, at the axe, right? It actually goes through the stage entirely and will, and will hit people under the stage um, who are recovering at that angle, which is a really popular angle for Fox, Inkling, and a few other characters. So um, that's just something for you guys to know. If Isabel ends up stealing your axe, uh, she can, in fact, throw it from below the stage and kill you with it from under the stage. So you want to be careful. Um, Isabel or Villager, right? So Axe is really good. It's used for controlling the air and forcing your opponent to air dodge. Now, it's important to note that opponents can attack the Axe and they'll negate the hitbox. But remember, if they're attacking the Axe, they're not attacking you. So you can punish them when they touch the ground. That's kind of like Richter's game plan. You want to control space with your projectiles, make your opponents jump or air dodge, and then when they touch the ground, you F tilt them or you grab their landings or whatever else, right? Now, holy water. Holy water lasts a considerable amount of time for a projectile. It uh, It's long lasting and you can get a forward smash out of it. So it's really, really good for ledge trapping, right? If I leave the holy water right there, DK will stand up into it when he's getting up from the ledge and then I can kill him. That was poorly timed, but it, that is how it works. So basically, you once you get your opponent on the ledge, using holy water on the ledge is really good for setting up KOs, right? So forward throw, he grabbed the ledge, holy water, he gets up into it and then I get a, a guaranteed F smash or whatever else I want, right? So that's kind of like the setup there. Now, I know DK can roll from the ledge, right? I have Holy Water there, but you can just wait. If you think your opponent's gonna roll from the ledge, you throw Holy Water, 
and then you wait and you grab them, they're going to roll right into you. So you have to kind of play with the position here when you're setting up your, your edge holy water. You want to make sure that it covers the forward getup distance, but you want to make sure that you're standing where if they decide to roll from the ledge, being this option to avoid holy water, you still get your punish. If they hang on to the ledge too long, you can actually angle down your F smash and kill them. So he's really good at ledge trapping just based on his tools. Uh, and you can cover a lot with just holy water and your positioning. So that's that's my favorite utility of holy water. It's also pretty good when you're in the air. Um, you can use it as an angled down hitbox. And people kind of have to shield it. If they block holy water, the bottle will bounce off their shield. And it will hurt you if it, if it explodes. It becomes neutral. It's not theirs, but it's not yours anymore. Right, so like I can throw it on the ground and, and walk into it, it doesn't hurt me. But if it bounces off their shield or their hitbox, um, it becomes a neutral item and it, it can hurt Richter also. If they catch the bottle and throw it at you, it's theirs now. The fire, I don't think the fire can hurt them. I think it's it becomes their possession. Um, but I could be wrong, it might just be neutral as well. Um, so I, I would have to double check that, but yeah. So um, let's talk a little bit about his normals now that we've talked about his specials. Uh, forward tilt is probably one of his best moves and you want to practice angle like a dash away forward tilt. This is really important for using the character guys. People are going to be jumping in at you right? They're Most of the time they're going to be approaching and jumping at you but you're going to dodge their attacks with the dash back and then you're going to stay safe by forward tilting them as they get closer, right? So that's kind of like the, the mindset. You're, you're dodging with the dash away, and then you're forward tilting to punish the landing. So that's pretty much where uh, where Richter excels. His hitboxes are, are super disjointed, and they can't be contested. See how I'm kind of like keeping DK away? So that's kind of like how you really want to use forward tilt. You also can use it at neutral to like dash up F tilt. Um, but generally you are going to be dashing away when people approach and F tilting in their direction to punish their landings because people need to jump over cross, right? They need to jump over holy water and when they jump in, they're going to swing at you. So you just avoid the attack and then you F tilt them as a, as a retort or as a punish. That's really good. Also. People are going to jump in over holy water or over cross and then you can up B them. Up B is a really good move. It actually kills. It, it's pretty strong. It kills at higher percents and the higher you are when you use it, the earlier it'll kill. So you can actually get some stuff off of down air into up B and kill people at pretty early percents. Maybe even as early as 80. So this is a, a tech that... Yeah, so if it was any other character aside from DK, he would be dead. So you can try to find your down air uh, into up B and, and get early KOs that way, depending on your opponent. Yeah, so that, that's a true combo. It's inescapable, um, even with good DI. Uh, it just depends on where the down air hits will govern uh, how true that is or you know sometimes you'll, you'll hit them like with the end of it and you see how he's a little bit forward that might have not been a true combo if I did it there but see that so it depends on the situation so if it, if it does hit like far away then you just forward air them right and you can angle your forward air up you don't have to do it straight you can angle it diagonally yeah so if you just press forward air and hold up, he'll do it upwards, and if you do it hold down, he'll do it downwards. Yeah, like that. Yeah. Forward air and hold down. But you might get some fast falls, so this is definitely an input that people want to work on. Um, but short hop, short hop fast fall fair is really good. It's pretty safe, and it covers a lot of space. So this is another input you're going to want to work on. His up air and up smash are really specific. So unless you know they're going to hit, you kind of don't want to commit to up smash. But 
If you have a guaranteed punish, then you can go for it. You can do things like holy water into cross, um, into falling forward air. I'll explain right now. So you're going to throw holy water, jump up, cross, forward air him into the cross on the way back, and then you can get an up smash or you can get an up B depending on the timing. Right? See how it sets up into up smash there? This is a really specific combo, and I wouldn't like recommend it all the time, but it's just a, another setup that you can employ into your gameplay. You can even get down airs off of this if you uh, if you set it up correctly. It's just it's really big brain. Um, his down tilt's really good. It's actually a slide that can go under some projectiles, and if you press A twice, he'll do this leap, this like uh, sliding kick, which is really good. Once people get close to you, um, they're gonna jump in at you and attack. You can actually just slide away and go to the other side of the stage and continue setting up your wall again, uh, which a lot of people have a hard time getting around. So you kind of just want to stay evasive and, and stay away from people. You don't really want to fight up close. If it does come down to it, his grabs are pretty good. Forward throw will kill at higher percents. And back throw will also kill at higher percents. As for combos off his throws, he gets down throw into forward air, depending on percent. At low percents, anywhere from 0 to 40, I want to say. Down throw into forward air is a true thing, so you get 20% off of that. And you get stage positioning, so it's really good. Right, so then if people do get on your on your tail and you need to get them off you, up B out of shield is a really good option. I don't know if Richter's up B has invincibility on it, like Marth's or Lucina's, but it's still a really good anti-air and a really good out of shield option. You can reverse it as well. So if you ever shield an attack, you can always just punish with up B out of shield. Or Jump out of shield and do a nair, depending on the situation, but jump jump out of shield nair is really good for punishing people who are attacking your shield unsafely, and I would recommend it. His back air is also a really good disjoint, and it ends up killing at high percents. Uh, so consider using it the same way you use short hop forward air, fast fall. Really good spacing tool to just keep people out and try to, uh, try to get them. Now, I want to talk something about projectile and zoners. Every time you throw a projectile, let's say your opponent blocks it, right? Let's say he blocks that cross, he approaches a little bit more. I, I dash back, I throw another cross, he blocks it, and he approaches forward a little bit more. I back up, guess what he's gonna do again? He's probably gonna shield. So sometimes you have to like challenge that, and instead of throwing another projectile, dash up and grab, right? Because they're gonna be shielding. So you're like conditioning them to shield a lot, shield back away shield and then when they, when they finally try to shield the fourth projectile you don't throw it you just run up and grab and you throw them off and then you start setting up for your holy water setups and trying to kill them at the ledge uh so that that's kind of like projectile character 101 or the other one is uh shield they shield projectile they shield projectile they shield projectile dash attack right because they're now they're expecting you to throw another one but instead of throwing another one, you're just going to get in their face and try to uh, beat them to the punch essentially, right? That These are just options, I'm not saying to always do this, but that's kind of like how you want to condition people. You scare them into shielding, scare them into shielding. Oh, another thing, when you throw holy water in front of someone, odds are 9 times out of 10 they're going to keep shielding because they're scared of the fire and you just, you just run in and you grab. You run through the fire and you grab them because most of the time they're gonna they're gonna keep shielding because they they don't want to get hit by it or they're gonna jump over it. One of those two things, right? He's scared, so I run up and grab, or he jumps over, so I can try to meet him in the air with a forward air or whatever. He jumps over it, he approaches me, dash away F tilt. So the way I'm doing the dash away F tilts is I have my C stick in control settings set to tilt. So I can just hit the C stick in any direction and get the forward tilt. And then I'm just dashing away on the analog stick and I'm hitting the opposite direction on the C stick. But it's important that I'm not holding dash. I'm just dashing once. 
I'm pressing it once and then hitting F tilt. Because if you hold dash and then you hit the C stick, you'll get a dash attack. So you want to let go of dash before you, you uh, input the forward tilt. Super important stuff. Also, up tilt's a really good anti-air. It's kind of long-lasting and it's very disjointed. So if people are directly above you coming down, don't be afraid to up tilt and pop them back up in the air. And then of course, Nair is really good too, uh, just as a get off me option. So do, do learn how to Nair out of shield. You just hold your shield, you press jump and A at the same time. And it's a good get off me option. Same thing for up B out of shield. You hold shield and then you press up and B and it'll cancel your shield drop frames so if people are attacking you you can even reverse this input to do it in the other direction now finally i want to talk about richter's biggest weakness aside from having not that many up close options so you have to kind of manage your opponent at a safe distance his biggest biggest weakness overall is his recovery everybody knows this it's no surprise so i just want to cover a few things that might help you guys recover from further distances. So let's make DK forward smashes. So when you get hit, you generally don't, see, notice how high up I went, right? If I hold down, I actually go at a horizontal angle and it's harder for me to recover. But if I hold up, I go up higher and I, it gives me a lot more time to recover. So generally, you sometimes want to not DI correctly and you want to hold up so that you gain more height after you get hit. So I'm going to hold up. I can air dodge out here, jump up B if I need to, right? So uh, air dodging early is not a bad thing uh, with the Belmonts. Air dodge directional, jump up B. Uh, because it gives you extra horizontal distance that you might need to recover. Right, so there's that. The other thing I want to talk about is just mixing it up, you guys. You don't always want to do the tether at the same time, every time. Your opponent's going to come down there and just whack you and you're dead. So to avoid this, sometimes you're going to have to do the tether from up here, from like higher up, uh, from like further out. You're going to have to go low and use the tether from down low. Another thing, guys, that's super important is... Do not use your double jump as soon as you get hit. I see so many players do this, um, especially Richter Belmont players. They'll, as soon as they get hit, they jump, right? And then what does that do? It makes it so that if you get hit again, you're just dead. Like, so let's say you jump when you're out here. Now if you get forward aired, how are you gonna recover? You don't have a jump. So it's super important to conserve that double jump even if you're gonna get hit it doesn't matter you still can jump up b or jump and tether but once you burn that jump you might you're just as good as dead right like if someone just hits me right there then i'm dead right but let's say i'm recovering and then i get hit right doesn't matter i can come back again and jump and then tether from low or something else so as long as you have a double jump you're kind of in good shape um, and you could then just continue to air dodge. And then even if you get hit again, okay, air dodge, right? And then jump up B or jump tether. And you should be able to make it from really far distances. Um, the big mistake that people make is they get hit. They burn their double jump immediately because they're scared. And then they just get hit. They get tapped once off stage and die. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it guys. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. I would greatly appreciate that. And secondly, consider following me on Twitter. It's a really good way to reach out to me, ask me questions, and just to stay on top of things that I'm doing as far as like my, my live streams for Smash, any tournaments that I'm attending, any giveaways or tournaments that I'm hosting. So it's just a really good way to keep in contact and to stay connected with me outside of this channel so yeah thank you guys so much for watching i will see you all next time